Uh oh, the signs of the zodiac are changing. How will I know if I should get up tomorrow? Of course, it doesn't matter to your everyday life, but the zodiac really is changing, and the story of why has to do with the history of astronomy and the constantly moving planets and stars. At least as far back as 3000 BCE, ancient Mesopotamians looked up at the stars and created the first known pictographs of constellations. These constellations inspired artwork still in existence today, which show what may be early prototypes of the constellations Leo, Sagittarius and Aquarius, as well as depictions of the Sun, Moon and Venus. The constellations were used to represent the gods and to mark time in the form of a farming calendar. This knowledge was later passed on to the ancient Greeks as Mesopotamia fell and is also the origin for Islamic and Chinese astronomy. The Greeks continued to develop this astronomy, which in turn went on to influence Western European astronomy. By the 15th century, 48 constellations visible from Europe in the Northern Hemisphere had been documented. During the Age of Discovery, as Europeans started to sail ever further south, explorers saw new stars and created new constellations. By the mid-18th century, the entirety of the world's night sky, or celestial sphere, had been observed. But there were still small gaps of dim stars in between the constellations. So in 1928, the International Astronomical Union agreed on 88 modern constellations with contiguous borders that together cover the entire celestial sphere. Today this means that you can quickly find the general location of any night sky object by knowing which constellation it appears to be in. Notice that I said appears in, because although it looks like the Sombrero Galaxy is in the constellation Virgo, the stars that make up Virgo are only a few thousand light years away, inside the Milky Way, while the Sombrero Galaxy itself is 30 million light years away. Not even the stars within Virgo are the same distance from Earth. As we approach them at 60 million times the speed of light, you can see how skewed the constellation becomes, and eventually the stars are all over the place. I think it's fun to imagine how constellations will become useless as we humans eventually move beyond the solar system. We'll truly have moved on from Earth when we can't recognise constellations anymore. But sadly, that's a bit far into the future. But constellations don't just change as we travel towards them. Just like the Sun, all the other stars in the Milky Way orbit the galactic centre at varying speeds. And depending on how close they are, as we move through time, we can see the stars and constellations shift. The quickest shift we see in the night sky, though, is from Earth's own model, called precession. Every 26,000 years, the 23.5 degree axial tilt in Earth's rotation traces out a cone in space. The reason for this has to do with the gravitational pull of the Sun and Moon on the oblate Earth. This results in several interesting phenomena in the night sky. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you probably know Polaris as the Northern Star. Because it's so closely aligned with Earth's axis of rotation, as the Earth spins, all the stars seem to orbit Polaris. But, because of the Earth's precession, this point will move in a big circle over the course of the next 26,000 years. In 12,000 years, the star Vega will be close to Earth's axis of rotation, making it the new northern star. Meanwhile, in the southern hemisphere, a similar thing will happen. We will go from having no southern star to continuing to not really have one for a long time, until Canopus comes kinda close in 12,000 years. You might have heard of Earth's wobble before, as precession of the equinoxes. Because it's the tilt of the Earth that determines when the equinox occurs, then of course, as the tilt processes, the date of the equinoxes change too. Seasons are also dependent on which way the Earth is facing, so in 13,000 years, the summer solstice will occur on the date of the current winter solstice, and also every other day in between that. Now, to understand why the signs of the zodiac are changing, we need to learn one more concept of astronomy, namely, the ecliptic. The ecliptic is just the path that the Sun traces out on the celestial sphere over the course of a year. In ancient times, the ecliptic happened to pass through 12 constellations, which is where we get the signs of the zodiac. The sun spent about a month crossing each of the constellations, which gives us the dates for each star sign. Because of the precession of the Earth, however, the dates of when the sun is in each constellation has changed. If you were born on the 24th of June in ancient Babylon, your star sign would have been Cancer, while today the sun would be in Gemini, and in fact getting close to the constellation Taurus. If you're interested in what constellation the sun was in when you were born, I've put the dates in the description. Just as Earth's axial tilt varies, so does its orbit around the sun. 
although it's a much smaller amount. This means the path that the ecliptic traces out on the celestial sphere can vary, which has led to the current situation where the Sun passes through the constellation Ophicius, Ophicius, Ophiuchus, for 19 days of the year, even though it's not part of the traditional zodiac. The sun also spends a few hours grazing past the constellation Cetus, so if you're born then, you can claim a very unique star sign. Seen from Mars, the sun actually spends six days in the constellation Cetus, so that's just another reason to start colonizing. As we humans continue to advance, we use the constellations less and less. Today, we only use them for astronomy and maybe sometimes for navigation. And as you've seen, in our distant future, they'll be completely useless. But it's still fun to see where these traditions come from and how they evolve, so hopefully you got something from this video. Just in case you haven't yet, I've got one quick fact for you. Uh, you may have seen a horoscope reading in the newspaper before, and they say Venus is passing through Capricorn and that means something rather. But the planets actually pass through eight constellations more than the Sun does, so there are actually 21 constellations of the Zodiac, if you measure it like that. So, that's probably a good name for this video. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. And thank you to everyone who's gotten me to a thousand subscribers. It puts pressure on me to keep making videos. So if you want to see more, just keep subscribing and you'll probably get more. Thanks everyone.